Ever since I went through and mapped all the Russian vehicle storage bases for the video that I did on the number of Russian tanks, I got curious about the Russian ground forces as a whole. So I took it a step further and spent probably 100 plus hours finding and mapping every single site, which I'll post online for anyone to see. Some were easy to find. Others took me down a rabbit hole of doing things like reading Russian comments on Wikimapia and going through Russian news sites talking about where nearby ATMs are for conscripts at a base to withdraw cash, just to then find the exact location of a base. Further complicating this is the fact that Russia has been constantly reforming and changing its structure ever since the collapse of the Soviet Union. So this video will not only show every site mapped, but also give a look into the current structure and why they're making so many changes. But real quick, this video is sponsor, Ridge Wallet. Wallets are annoying. They're big and bulky and a pain to carry around or even sit down with it in your pocket. Ridge Wallet solves that. They're slim and easily slides into your pocket. They hold up with 12 cards plus room for cash, as well as RFID blocking technology to protect you from digital pickpocketers. They have more than 30 styles and colors and they're made to last and backed up with a lifetime warranty. In fact, they're so confident you'll love it, they'll give you a 45 day test drive. You try it out, and if you don't love it, send it back and they'll give you a full refund. And also with Father's Day quickly approaching, it can make the perfect gift. So go over and check them out at ridge.com slash covert. And with the code covert, you'll get an extra 15% off. Again, Ridge Wallet. It's almost impossible to overstate the impact World War II had on Russian military thinking. The sudden invasion during Operation Barbarossa left them completely unprepared. During the Cold War, the Soviet Union set up huge command structures just in case they needed to rapidly mobilize literally thousands of divisions. With the collapse of the Soviet Union, Russia has been left with this bloated command structure and no way to pay for it. Under the communist system, personnel were given better access to housing, better educational and medical facilities, and even free vacations. Russia still tries to maintain a lot of these benefits, but with more privatization, such as with housing, and capitalism in general, it becomes extremely costly for the government. But this has all left them with a huge ratio of officers to enlisted personnel. Russia has made several attempts to fix this. The most successful was the New Look reforms of 2008. That reform shrank the size of formations from divisions to brigades, and therefore removed the need for large numbers of officers down the ladder. And in case you're not as nerdy as me, or you were never in the military, here's the order of size of formations from Wikipedia. Most Russian divisions became brigades, which is the next step down, and regiments down a step to battalions. And this brought that officer ratio down closer to most Western armies. However, Russia seems to be reintroducing some divisions again. The 20th, 47th, and 127th Motor Rifle Divisions, for example, have all been created in the last few years. One possible reason is they want to have more combat power in different regions to deter NATO in the West and threats in the Pacific to the East. But unless they're able to fully man the units making them up, which is even less likely with the war in Ukraine, Russia is going to be running into this problem again. To be fair though, Russia does do things differently. They're fully aware and have studied extensively the way that more Western armies emphasize NCOs, and they reject it. Their system has smaller staffs. This gives their officers more direct experience commanding and leading their units, and also their system creates a focus on becoming an expert in their field. Unlike Western armies, Russian officers tend to stay in their initial field for their whole career. This enables them to potentially achieve a level of expertise above that of the US in any particular field, for example. However, it also has its downsides. The ever-increasing importance of combined arms and joint warfare, that is using all aspects of fighting by ground, sea, air, and cyber together to maximize capability and lethality, requires knowledgeable officers in all aspects of warfare to fully take advantage of this. So there are pros and cons to each system. Another big difference in choice is Russia operating smaller deployable maneuver units at the battalion level called battalion technical groups. These are their basic unit capable of independent action with a bit of everything necessary. Tanks and other IFVs, air defense, artillery support, etc. BTGs are formed in an ad hoc manner from tank or motor rifle brigades or regiments using the most capable and combat ready equipment. This can be compared to the US using much larger brigade combat teams. Again, there are pros and cons to each approach. Russia noticed that the wars it was fighting since the collapse of the Soviet Union had been smaller. Therefore, large brigade-sized maneuver units was overkill and wasn't effective. There's other pros, but there's also several cons, such as complicating logistics and also the lack of ability to act in a strategic role. That role gets pushed up to higher command and even up to the general staff. BTGs have a more narrow focus, they're more rigid, and they're less flexible to adapt to the changing battlefield conditions compared to larger brigade combat teams. There's a lot more to it, but both have their benefits. Anyway, on to mapping. Russian armed forces are currently broken down into five districts. Western, Southern, Central, Eastern, and the recently added Northern. 
As far as their ground forces go, each district consists of a few combined arms army and one army corps, with the exception of the central district, which is effectively landlocked due to there being no other nation threat coming from the north, and therefore no need for a coastal defense army corps, and then the northern district, which has no armies and only a corps. But each field army typically consists of about three motor rifle or tank brigades or divisions. These again are that main combat formation from which the battalion tactical groups are formed. Then they also typically have one command and control brigade, an artillery brigade, air defense brigade, recon, and then smaller support regiments and battalions such as logistics, engineers, nuclear, biological, and chemical protection, etc. They also have some independent units in districts that are not under any field army. The most interesting that I found was the Northern District. It was only just elevated to the status of a military district in 2001. Previously, it had been considered part of the Northern Fleet of Russia's Navy, and before that, just part of the Western District. Because of its remote location, and the fact that Finland was a neutral country, the district only has three total combat brigades, two motor rifle, and one naval infantry. However, now that Finland has applied to join NATO in response to the war in Ukraine, it'll be interesting to see how Russia grows the district, possibly creating even new combined arms armies. Also interesting is the so-called Tactical Arctic Groups. These are in extremely remote islands so far north that it's difficult to get satellite imagery of them. Russia has recognized the growing importance of the Arctic, where melting ice is opening up new shipping routes and enabling the extraction of the vast wealth of oil, natural gas, and other resources that are there. Right now, a lot of countries are investing in the Arctic, from Canada building new ships to operate in the region, to the US increasing Arctic exercises, to Denmark creating their Joint Arctic Command, just to name a few. Russia's tactical Arctic groups appear to be their way of establishing control in the region. But this was a ton of work to do, so I don't think I'm going to go through and mark all their air, airborne, space, naval, special forces, national guard, missile forces as well. But another guy I did talk to, Status 6, actually has. Last I checked, he had marked everything except the Eastern District. It's really incredible work. Go check it out if you're interested. Now I didn't copy any of his work whatsoever, but I did go back and compare some of the sites. Almost all are the same, but there are a few we marked in different locations. A lot of these military sites are just so hard to find reliable information on their exact location, and there's a lot of conflicting information online. And as I mentioned before, they're also always changing. For example, the 20th Guards Motor Rifle Division was just created in December 2021, and the 47th Tank Division created in February 2022. Also, the war in Ukraine is likely to lead to a lot more changes coming, like the 26th Tank Regiment here reportedly being completely neutralized. So mine is also likely to be outdated soon. But anyway, if you want to check it out and see it for yourself, go check out Project Owl's Discord server I'm partnering with. I posted that, along with my larger project trying to map every military site on Earth. You could have a lot of fun checking out obscure Russian brigades in very remote Siberia, US ballistic missile defense test sites, or even an old armored vehicle storage depot in Italy. 